All right, here we're going to look at some more examples of finding the radius and interval of convergence for some series. So in part A here, we've got the series from 1 to infinity, uh, x plus 3 to the n over n squared plus 2n. So again, just going to use the good old ratio test. So the limit as n goes to infinity, we'll have x plus 3 to the n plus 1 n plus 1 squared plus 2 times n plus 1. And then we'll multiply by the reciprocal. So n squared plus 2n over x plus 3 to the n. And now just uh, simplification. So we have x plus 3 to the n plus 1 over x plus 3 to the n we'll have an x plus 3 to the first in the numerator. And then we're going to have uh, n squared plus 2n. Notice uh, in the denominator, if we expand out some stuff, we'll eventually have an, you know, n plus n times n plus n. That'll give us an n squared term. But then everything else will either involve n or constants. So we'll have some other terms. I'm going to be lazy and not compute them. But again, I'm recognizing that the degree the degree of the numerator is going to be same, the same as the degree of the denominator, and the coefficients are also going to be the same. So we can pull out our x plus 3. When we take the limit as n goes to infinity of the n squared plus 2n over n squared plus the rest of the stuff, since the degree, uh, the degree of the numerator is the same as the degree of the denominator, we can take the ratio of the coefficients, which will be positive 1. And again, that's going to be our limit. So we want this limit to be less than 1. So again, that'll give us negative 1 less than x plus 3, less than uh, positive 1. And now if we subtract 3 everywhere, we'll get negative 4 less than x, uh, less than negative 2. All right, so now we're going to have to go back and check the endpoints individually just to see what happens. So we'll have to check x equals negative 4 and x equals negative 2. So again, we've got negative 4 to negative 2 for our interval. I don't know if we should use parentheses or brackets just yet. So let's go back to the original series. So if we plug in negative 4, notice we'll have the series from 1 to infinity. We'll have negative 4 plus 3, that'll give us negative 1 to the n, over n squared plus 2n. But this is just a nice little alternating series. So two conditions, the limit as n goes to infinity of 1 over n squared plus 2n, that definitely equals 0. And the other thing is, is it decreasing? But again, you can plug in, you know, n equals 1, 2, 3, 4. The denominator is going to get larger and larger and larger. So certainly 1 over n squared plus 2n, that is going to be decreasing. So both conditions are satisfied, which means our series does converge um, at negative 4. When we plug negative 2 back into our original series, well, in that case, we'll have negative 2 plus 3, which is positive 1. 1 to the uh, any power is just 1. So then we have 1 over n squared plus 2n. Okay, so now we're wondering, does this series converge or diverge? Well, here we can do the limit comparison test with the series 1 over n squared. And again, this is just a convergent p-series. And if we do the limit comparison test, so the limit is n goes to infinity, 1 over n squared plus 2n, uh, we would divide by 1 over n squared, which is the same as multiplying by n squared over 1. This limit's going to equal positive 1. Again, a positive finite number. These all both have positive terms uh, initially. Since it's a positive finite number, it says both series do the same thing, which in this case is going to be converge. So the series also converges at negative 2. So there's our interval of convergence from negative 4 to negative 2. So that's our interval of convergence. And then the radius of convergence, again, the length of this interval, 
from negative 4 to negative 2 is just going to be 2. We divide that by 2, and we'll get, again, the value of just positive 1 for the radius of convergence.